up YouTube? Welcome to my new series, Power BI Desktop No to Pro, where we're gonna be starting from the very basic, the basics of what you need to know about the Power BI Desktop and the different areas within inside of it, all the way up to some more professional level DAX calculations. We're gonna be talking about context transition, talking about row context, filter context, and we're gonna dive really deep into the Power BI Desktop, but we're gonna take it from the very beginning and progress along more and more complicated. So make sure you follow along. If you want the file that I'm gonna be importing at the end of this video, if you just check the information section down below, you'll see a link to download that uh, Excel file for the worldwide import. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started and let's jump over to our Power BI desktop. All right, so here we are inside of our Power BI desktop, and we're just gonna start off with um, some basic understanding of the Power BI desktop. Now the Power BI desktop is created in stages, and so the first stage is what is called data discovery. So data discovery comes from this section here at the top, the data section where you can choose your different data sources. Also, you can choose transform data here. Transform data is going to take us inside what's known as the Power Query Editor. So the Power Query Editor is a way to transform our data. So as we start manipulating our data, we're going to do that inside the Power Query Editor, which is a separate program from the Power BI desktop, but it is embedded with inside of it. So these two areas right here make up the very first stage, and that very first stage is data discovery. So with inside of data discovery, a couple things take place. This is where we're going to connect to our data source or data sources, you can have more than one. And this is also where we're going to access the Power Query Editor, like I said. And that is where the transformations take place and the cleansing. So removing any bad data that we don't need, any columns that we're not gonna use, we're gonna take care of that inside of the Power Query Editor. So that's step one. So step one is data discovery, bringing the data into the Power BI desktop. And with that, you're gonna see up here at the top that the Get Data dropdown has our common data sources here. So these are common data sources as dictated by Power BI. These do not change based on how many times you use them, but these are common data sources as dictated by Power BI. If you want the full list of data sources, you can also click this more option down here at the bottom or just click the icon, the database icon here at the top. This is gonna bring up our full list of data sources that we have available to us with inside of the Power BI desktop. And this list is continuing to grow all the time. So each month that they come out with an update, there are new connections added. Um, and so the full list of all the different data source connections are available with inside of here. The second stage of the Power BI lifecycle comes from these two right here. Okay, so this one is known as the data view. So this is where you can see your data, the full data set. And this is known as the modeling view. So these two views on the left-hand side make up step number two. Okay, so the step number two in the Power BI lifecycle is data modeling, also known as data mashup. So with data modeling or data mashup, this is where we're going to start creating the relationships between tables. This is also where we're going to design hierarchies.
And this is also where we're going to start writing some DAX. And so this is where we're going to start getting into row context and filter context, the calculate function, one of the most powerful functions in DAX. And so as we get into data modeling, data mashup, we're definitely going to start talking about um, the different understandings in the information that we need to really create DAX in an efficient manner. And DAX stands for the data analysis expression language. So step number two comes from these two views, the data view and the modeling view. The data view is where we are able to see all of our data once again, and the modeling view is where we're gonna create the relationships between our tables. We can define hierarchies with inside of the Power BI desktop. Step number three, comes from the third view here. So this one is the report view. So this is step number three. This is data visualization. And once again, this is the report view. And I'll go back all over this um, here at the end once I'm finished. So data visualization, this is where everyone thinks about Power BI. We're gonna have our charts, our graphs, and our gauges. Uh, this is where we can also bring in custom visuals from the app source, the marketplace there. So this is where we're gonna actually design all of the visualizations with inside of the Power BI desktop. All right, and so as we go through this process, as we clean our data, as we shape it, we model it, and then we're gonna visualize it, the last stage of the Power BI lifecycle comes from this button right here. This is the publish button. This is where we're gonna share out to the Power BI service. And so the fourth step in the Power BI lifecycle is data sharing. So this is where we're gonna publish our work. This is also where we can share our work with others. This is where we're gonna set up security. So this is how we're going to secure our data. And this is also where we're going to schedule refresh. So this is where we can schedule a time for our report to be refreshed daily at specific times, either on the hour or the half hour. All right, so that's kind of a general overview of the Power BI desktop as far as the main desktop is concerned and the areas that you need to know. Over on the right hand side, you're going to see several panes. So these are panes like a window pane. Okay, so these are panes. So you have the filters pane, the visualization pane, and the fields pane by default. The filters are the filters that are applied to the report. The visualizations are the visuals that are within inside the report. And fields, just so you know, a field is the same thing as a column. So as we bring in data, we're going to see all of our data with inside of this fields pane over here on the right hand side. Okay, so these are collapsible. You can see the little double arrows here at the top so you can expand and contract these as needed. So just a reminder of what these are called. Just a reminder of what these are called over here on the left hand side. So this is the report view. This is the data view. And this one is the modeling view. Okay, three different views over here on the left hand side. So now that we have a, a, a general understanding of 
kind of where the, the different areas take place, the very first stage is always data discovery. And so data discovery, once again, takes place here at the top under the data section or the query section. So if we're starting from scratch, like we are here today, we need to bring data in from whatever the data source is. In our case, we're gonna be using an Excel file. So notice I can choose Excel workbook directly from here at the top. I can also choose the get data dropdown here as well. So I can select the get data dropdown and you can see that Excel workbook there as well. So multiple ways to choose this. There's no right or wrong way to choose your data source. Um, but if you want to follow along, once again, the information section about this video, you'll see the link to download the Excel workbook for this file. And so anytime you connect into data, it's going to give you a preview of what data is living with inside of that file. And so we can see there is a lot with inside of here. So some of these tables are duplicated. But one thing we want to really understand is the difference between these icons. The iconography, as it's called, represents what these objects are. So everything highlighted in red is actually a sheet. And anything highlighted in blue would be a table. Notice the difference in the icons. Okay, So the table has the blue bar across the top. This is going to represent a sheet. All right, so for the final step in our video today, we're just gonna select the table that we want. Now, notice that we can get a preview of the table by selecting the name of the preview. The name of the table, the preview will appear over on the right-hand side. So we have several different tables. We have a city, customer, date, employee, sale. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna bring in all of these tables. So I'm gonna go ahead and select multiple tables here by choosing the checkbox. Now one of the last things I'm gonna talk about before we kind of end this video, but I'm gonna to try to provide as much information in each video as possible. So we have two different options, well, three different options. Everybody knows what cancel is, so I don't need to talk about that, but we have load and transform data. The difference between the two is the load option is for when you have clean data. So if the data has already been cleaned, it's already been through a transformation process, we can load it directly into the Power BI desktop. But if we're gonna be making any changes, manipulating our data in any way, we're gonna to wanna to transform data. This is going to take us to the Power Query Editor. And this is for bad data. So this is where we're going to do our cleansing. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and select transform data. This is gonna take us into the Power Query Editor. Now notice that the Power Query Editor appears on its own separate screen. So it appears here, kind of pops out a little bit, and we can see that I now have my six tables loaded with inside of the Power Query Editor. So for this video, we're gonna stop right here as we're bringing the data in. I'm gonna chunk this up in small stages just so you can get a real good understanding of the process and each step along the way, we're gonna be talking about different ways that we can manipulate the data and start to transform it in a way that's gonna make more sense as we go to start reporting on it. So go ahead and we're gonna save this file and you can, can, you can pick this file back up in the next video. So I'm gonna show you how to save this without applying our changes to the Power BI desktop. So one thing to note is that anytime you bring in data into the Power Query Editor, it has not applied those changes to the Power BI desktop. So if you look in the upper left hand corner, okay, we're going to choose file up here at the top. So we're going to choose file. So what we're going to do is we're going to save this without loading this into the Power BI desktop. This is also a way for if you have 
a lot of transformations with inside of your Power Query Editor. If you want to save your Power Query Editor before loading it into the Power BI desktop, this is also a way to do that as well. So I'm going to click File and I'm going to click Save As. And I'm going to choose the Apply Later option. So I'm going to apply the changes to the Power Query Editor later. So this is going to save my Power Query Editor as it is right now before it loads it into the Power BI desktop. So I'm going to choose Apply Later. And so what this does is it saves the Power Query Editor as it is right now before applying any changes to the Power BI desktop. So now I can close the Power Query Editor. I'm going to say, do you want to apply changes? Not now, because we're going to be making some manipulations. Notice it gives us the option to apply the changes here. But once again, we do not want to do that. We haven't made any manipulations or transformations in the Power Query. So I'm just going to close this. And now my file is saved. It's ready to go. My Power Query Editor is saved before we have applied it into our Power BI desktop. So it's going to be ready to go in the Power Query as soon as we get back. Thank you so much for joining me. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and look for the next video where we're going to be going through the Power Query Editor and we're going to do a deep dive into the different transformations that are available with inside of that. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you in the next one.